Hello, and welcome back to the Cracking Fang YouTube channel. Today we're going to be solving lead code problem 1344, angle between hands of a clock. Before we get into the problem, I would just like to ask you to subscribe. I have a goal of reaching 1000 subscribers on, on my channel before the end of May, and I need your help to get there. So if you're enjoying the content and you like the videos that I'm making, please subscribe to my channel and help me grow. This is going to help me reach a broader audience and make more videos for you guys so you can get into Fang as well. That being said, let's read the question prompt. Given two numbers, hour and minutes, return the smaller angle in degrees formed between the hour and the minute hand. For example, if we're given this hour 12 and minutes 30, so 12.30, we want to calculate the difference in degrees between the two hands. So basically, what is the difference here? <laughs> so what we need to do is we need to figure out what the degrees of the hour is and the degrees of the minutes is. So the minutes is a little bit simpler because we don't have to deal with the fact that the hour hand is actually going to move relative to where um, you know the minutes is, right? The, the hour hand will move. As we can see, it's halfway between 12 and 1 because we're halfway through the hour. So that's going to be a little bit trickier. So let's do the minutes first. So minutes, as we know, is going to be whatever the minutes is, so 30, and how many degrees are in a minute, right? So if there's 360 degrees in an hour, then every minute, and there's 60 per uh, hour, so we expect 360 divided by 60 uh, degrees per minute. So this means that this calculation, so we can really think of this as 6, so we can think of it as having the minute hand is going to have 180 degrees. Now for the hour hand, so we'll just say M here, the hour hand, its degrees is going to be a little bit more complicated. Not only do we have to account for you know the base position of the hour, we need to also account for how far to the next hour it is relative to the minute hand. So the way that we're going to do this is we're going to calculate the base kind of degrees for the hour, which is going to be the hour uh, times, so how many degrees are in an hour. So we have 360 degrees per hour and then, you know, 12 hour markers uh, per day, right? So that's oh, sorry, 360 per day and then we have 12 hour markers. So we can think of this as really being 30, right? <clears throat> Oops, you can't really see that. Uh, so this upper portion here is 30 so we're really multiplying the hour times 30 plus then we need to account for the fact that the hour hand is actually going to be somewhere between the current hour and the next hour based on where the minute hand is so we just need to account for that by okay we have if we have 30 degrees per hour now we need to multiply it by how far it is between uh, the next hour which is going to be you know the number of uh, essentially minutes that have elapsed in this hour so we'll do minutes over 60 right because that's the amount of degrees that we're gonna have in that one um, period so for this one in particular so we have the hour so it's gonna be 12 so we have 12 times uh, 30 plus uh, what do we have here 12 times 30 times 30 times what is it uh, 30 over 60 right so this is going to be what uh, let's see 12 times 30 this is 360 plus 30 times basically one half so 15 so here we actually get 375 which doesn't really make sense right because right an hour only has 360 degrees well the reason that we get this is that you know when we get our solution, we actually just need to take the difference between the, I guess, the hour uh, degrees and the minute degrees. But as you notice, we can get, you know, negative numbers here or they can be in the wrong direction. So what we need to do is we now need to take the difference between these two. So we're going to say 375 minus 180. So this is going to be what? Um, 195, right? But this actually isn't the correct answer. Uh, because it's too big, right? That would actually be this bigger half. So what we need to do is we don't know which side we're actually calculating it for. We could be on the wrong side. Uh, we could be calculating the bigger side, but remember we want the smaller angle, right? There's two angles that are formed here, this big one and the small one, but we don't know which one it is. So our final answer is actually gonna be the minimum 
of whatever the difference is, so like 195, and then 365 minus 195. So we take the difference of 300, oh, not 365, sorry, it's 360. Uh, let me undo that, 360 minus whatever 195 is. And we can see that this is actually gonna be the smaller one, so this will be our answer. And that's what we're gonna return, right? 165 here. So that's how we get that answer. So that's really the approach that we wanna take. What we wanna do is first calculate the degrees for the minutes, which is gonna follow the formula of whatever the minutes is. So this is the minutes that we were given times 360 divided by 60, which is six, and we're gonna get that degrees. Then we're gonna calculate the hour, which is gonna be whatever the hour is, times 360 divided by 12, which is 30, plus 30, which we just got here, uh, times the amount of minutes that have elapsed in the hour, and that'll tell us how far in between the next hour it is, and that will be our hour degrees. Then we take the difference between these two, absolute value, because it could be negative, and then we, we wanna return is the minimum between that value we just got and 360 minus it, because again, we don't know which angle we're gonna be working with. So that's the approach that we wanna take. The code is super simple. It's literally four lines of code here. So let's go to the code editor, write this up. It's gonna take no time at all. So I'll see you there. And now remember that I said the lines of code for this is only gonna be four. So this is gonna be super simple. Let's write the code. So all we need is the minute degrees and the hour degrees. So let's derive those. So remember that the minute degrees is going to be equal to the number of minutes we have times the number of degrees for each minute. So if there's 360 uh, degrees in an hour and there's 60 minutes in an hour, then 360 divided by 60 will tell us the number of degrees per minute. And if we multiply by that by the minutes, we'll get the minute degrees. Now for the hour degrees, remember that it's a little bit more complex in that we need the base hour and then we need how far it is to the next hour, right? We need to figure out you know, how far in between 12 and what it is relative to how far the hour hand is through the hour. So to calculate the base hour, we're gonna say, we're gonna take the current hour and we're gonna multiply it by 360 divided by 12, right? Because there's 12 positions for the hour in the uh, clock and there's you know 360 degrees for one full rotation of the hour hand. Then we need to account for the fact that the hour hand is gonna move uh, part way to the next hour. So we're gonna do that by saying, okay, again, there's 360 divided by 12 uh, degrees in an hour, but we need to figure out what fraction of it, the next hour um, we're closer to. So we need to multiply that. So we can just rewrite this as 30, just to keep things tidy. And we'll rewrite this, uh, we'll just leave that for now. Uh, and then we'll do minutes divided by 60. So this is the ratio of how far the minute hand is to the next hour, which will tell us how far our current hour hand is between the two hours. So that will be our minute degrees and hour degrees. Now remember that we need to calculate the difference between these two. And since it can be negative, we need to have the absolute value. So we're gonna say minute degrees um, minus hour degrees. And since we don't know, um, you know which side of the angle we actually took from this because we took the absolute value, we now need to simply return whichever one is smaller, our difference or 360 degrees minus our difference in the case that we took the larger half on accident. Because of this absolute value, we won't actually know uh, which half we took. So that's why we need to return the minimum here. So let us submit this, make sure we haven't made any bugs and we can see that we solved the problem. So what is the time and space complexity for this algorithm? Well, the time complexity is going to be big O of one. Why? Because we don't need to make any sort of, you know, parsings through our hour and minutes. All we're gonna have to do is just um, do some simple calculations and this is gonna happen in constant time, right? This is just three constant time computations and that's it for the space. Again, we just create some variables to hold these arithmetic results. We're not creating any new data structures, anything like that. So it's also going to be big O of one and big O of one uh, for the space. So the time is big O of one, space is big O of one. Super simple. This problem is really easy. I'm not sure why it's a medium. I think it's just knowing how to operate, um, you know, I guess a clock. But, you know, if you get it, 
it's always uh, good to know how to solve it. Anyway, if you enjoyed this video, please leave a like, comment, uh, subscribe to the channel. If there's any videos you'd like me to make, please leave it in the comment section below. I'll be happy to get back to you guys. Just tell me what you want to see and I'll make the videos. Otherwise, have a nice day. Bye.